Shalom. Today we're going to talk about the women who are listed in Yeshua's genealogy. There are four of them, and we'll see how that fits into the Pardes framework. Reading from Matthew 1, verses 3 through 6. And Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Chetzron, and Chetzron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminadav, and Aminadav begot Nachshon, and Nachshon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab, Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. David begot Solomon by her of Uriah. If you have not already studied the Pardes teaching, I'll put a link for it below. It will help you to understand better what we're talking about today. Remember there are four interpretations, the Peshat, the simple, the plain meaning, the remez, which is the hint or the reference, the drosh, which is a devotional meaning, and the sud, which is the secret meaning. First, we come to the plain meaning, which we will discuss the forefathers. Tamar is the first woman mentioned, and her name means palm tree. And palm trees are closely associated with the people of Israel. They are used in the celebration of tabernacle, Sukkot, Leviticus 23.40. And ye shall take to you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before Jehovah your God seven days. I've talked about the palm trees in a few other places. I'll put the links below for those. Exodus 12.5 Then they came to Elim where there were twelve wells of water and seventy palm trees. So they camped there by the waters at the beginning of the exodus of the migration away from Egypt. Second Chronicles 28.15 Then the men who were designated by name rose up and took the captives, and from the spoil they clothed all who were naked among them, dressed them, and gave them sandals, gave them food and drink, and anointed them. And they let all the feeble ones ride on donkeys, so they brought them to their brethren at Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then they returned to Samaria. Remember, Jericho was the first victory when the people came back into the land under the leadership of Joshua. This is my palm tree. I, I ate some dates a long time ago, and I set them in water for about a week, and then I put them in dirt. And they sprouted one by one. All four sprouted. I left with this one growing in the pot. Of course, I can't grow a palm tree here where I live, but it was a great experiment. This is what the beginning of a palm tree looks like. Palm trees are very similar to humans. They have male and female. They are upright, and they live about 100 years. They are a symbol of flourishing and of victory. In Psalm 92, 19, we read, The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. In Maccabees, we see the symbol of victory of the Jews against his accusers are the palm trees. They have a great longevity in terms of their seed. In the 1960s at Masada, they found a date seed, and they planted it, and it, it sprouted, and it grew a tree. So we have this idea of the tzemach, or the branch. We see the history of Israel and the state, the people being lost, really, and not having any country for 1900 years. And then suddenly, here comes the state of Israel in 1948. It is written in the writings that the palm tree is special because it bends, but it does not break. Here's a very famous picture of the original Judah and Tamar. He is haggling with her, and you know the story that she has played the prostitute. And actually, what we're going to see is that in all these women, there is some inappropriate sexual activity, which is kind of interesting because we're talking about the line of Yeshua. There are two other women named Tamar. One of them is a daughter of David, the sister of Absalom. And her brother, Amnon, falls desperately in love with her. And so he hatches a plot to lure her into his bedroom. From 2 Samuel 13, 10 and 11. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the bedroom that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she made and brought them to Amnon her brother in the bedroom. Now when she had brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, 
come, lie with me, my sister. And she refuses. She says, look, go, go talk to Daddy the King, and he will surely let me marry you, and we can be together. She wasn't averse to that idea. But instead, he forces her, he humiliates her, and two years later, Absalom comes and kills him for it. The picture of the pansy is here because this is the name in Israel of the pansy Amnon Vitamar, Amnon and Tamar. There is a similar two-color flower in Russia, and it is called Ivan da Maria in Russian, and it is a story of a brother and sister who are separated in childhood, and then they fall in love later without knowing that they are siblings. However, the story unfolds, they die in an embrace. And one a famous poet in Israel translated this folklore from Russian, he translated the names into Amnon and Tamar. As we said, Israel's history is full of prostitution and idolatry and deception, whether by design or by default. However, we should always remember Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So in both the flowers, whatever the Russian flower is, which is similar, it's a purple with a yellow on it, or the pansy, we see the two colors are locked together forever. Next we come to the remez, the reference to Messiah. And this is a story of Rahab, Rachav, Joshua 2.1. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men, spies secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab, who lodged there. There are some who have tried to twist this into making her a more virtuous woman, maybe just a hotel keeper or something, but the word means prostitute. In the end of the story, Joshua 6.25, Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household in all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. So where is the hidden reference to Messiah? There are a few. One is that the men are up on the roof, hiding. Joshua 2, six. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof. So flax is the plant from which linen is made. We see these men hiding. They're not visible. They're wrapped in linen. We also can trace the story of the scarlet thread. Joshua 2:18. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. This brings us back to Tamar, who had two children, Peretz and Zara. Genesis 38, 30. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Zara. In fact, even though he was marked to be the first, he was set aside, and Peretz's brother is in the line. Where else do we see the scarlet thread? Leviticus 14:4. Then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. In another offering, the same, Numbers 19.6, And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning heifer. This is the statute of the red heifer, which appears to be quite mystical but is clearly, in every aspect, a picture of the cleansing made for sin by Yeshua. In Luke 2.24, we see Yeshua's parents bringing him for his circumcision, and they also are required to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord. Here is a pair of turtle doves, the two birds, or the two young pigeons. Well, it does seem a bit shameful to associate Yeshua with this prostitution. It is entirely lined out as such in the Talmud. And this is how the rabbis think of his origin. The Gemara says, Why did they call him Ben Setada when he was the son of Pandira? Okay, talking about Yeshua. It's not an obscure reference. They know who they're talking about. Rav Chista says, Perhaps his mother's husband, who acted as his father, was named Setada. 
but his mother's paramour, who fathered this mumzer, mumzer is the word for bastard or fatherless child, was named Pandira. So when they talk among themselves, then if they're talking about Yeshua, first of all, they don't say Yeshua, they say Yeshu, which is an acrostic that they use instead of Yeshua's name. And in Hebrew, it stands for, may his name and his word be blotted out. When they talk about him, they call him Ben Pandira, who was some kind of Roman soldier. And they say, well, this is how he came about, that he was biologically fathered by this soldier. The Gemara challenges, but his mother's husband was Papas ben Yehuda, not Setada. Rather, perhaps his mother was named Setada, and he was named Ben Setada after her. The Gemara challenges, but his mother was Miriam, as we know, that was her name, who braided women's hair. The Gemara explains, this is not a contradiction. Setada was merely a nickname, as they say in Pumbedita, which is a town in Iran somewhere, I think. This one strayed, Setat Da, from her husband. So this is their whole explanation of our of Yeshua's origin. And to their mind, he is associated with this harlotry. We come to the devotional meaning, the meaning where we search out for ourselves, its relevance to our lives. And this is Ruth. The word Ruth means friend. And actually, it survives in the English language as the word ruthless, without being like Ruth. There used to be a word, Ruthful, but it is not used anymore. Interesting. In Ruth 3.10, Boaz says to her, Blessed be thou of Jehovah, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. I think in this generation we have seen more and more people coming to faith and to Torah than we have ever seen. Ruth is the model of the Gentile bride. She is brought into the line in such a prominent place as to be the mother of of the continuance of the line of Messiah. And more and more people these days, their hearts are turned just like Ruth. She saw the beauty and value of Naomi's faith, and she desired to follow it, leaving behind her family, her home, going forward with no hope or expectation, and yet receiving this blessing from Yehovah. The book is about chesed. It's about kindness. Finally, we have the sod meaning, the secret meaning, which is for the latter days. And you remember when we read the verse in Matthew, this person is so secret that she is not even named, but we know that her name is Bathsheba Batsheba. Her father was Eliam, or sometimes we'll see later Amiel, reversing the syllables. He was the son of Achitophel, the Gilonite, who was one of David's closest advisors. And he was one of David's mighty men, along with Uriah, um, Bathsheba's first husband. Which is all to say that David probably well knew who she was long before he saw her on the roof. Bathsheba means the daughter of the oath, or the daughter of the promise. And there are so many promises concerning the coming Messiah. And we'll read a few. Genesis 3.15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Isaiah 49.6, And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldst be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Micah 5.2 But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Isaiah 11, 1 and 2 And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow from his roots. And the spirit of Yehovah shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yehovah. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice 
from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of Jehovah of hosts will perform this. Isaiah 11.4 But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Zechariah 9.9 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the foal of an ass just a few of the remarkable promises that jehovah has made to bring messiah and who he will be it is interesting that when it talks about bathsheba in chronicles 3 5 it calls her by a slightly different name and these were born unto him in jerusalem shemea shavab and natan and solomon four of Bat Shua, the daughter of Amiel. If this is a scribal error, well, maybe there are no scribal errors in the Torah. They call her by a slightly different name, which phonetically could have been read Bat Sheva, since the original document has no vowels, and since the bet of her name, Sheva, and the vav of this Sheva or Shua, both have a v sound. But clearly, she's the mother of Solomon. She's the daughter of Amiel, which we discussed earlier, is the same guy as Eliam. And it turns out in First Chronicles 2 3, talking about Judah, the sons of Judah, Er and Onan and Shelah, which three were born unto him of the daughter of Shua, the Canaanitess. This was Judah's first wife, and her name was Bat Shua tying the whole thing back to the beginning where we started. Now these women had four sons, Peretz, Boaz, Obed, and Solomon, and we'll talk about them next time. I hope you can see how things are so wonderfully tied together in the book that Jehovah has given us so that we can know his word. Till next time, to Simita Enayim al-Hashamayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.